So thanks for all the love, everyone, from the last video where I did the spam fried rice. I am so shocked at how many people enjoy spam, I have to say. But even those who didn't enjoy spam enjoyed the video, so I really appreciate that you guys watched it anyways. But who wouldn't want to see dude trying to cook? Uh, well, thanks guys. <laughs> Well, today we're going to go to the other extreme and do a prime rib. <laughs> like real meat. I mean, spam is <laughs> You said meat. it. You said it, I not me. I take it all back. Normally, I would uh, slow roast the prime rib in the oven and um, it would take probably about four to five hours, but I'd have to be home for most of it. And today we are on our way out. So... I thought, you know what, let's sous vide the prime rib. It can cook while I'm out and it'll be perfect for when we get back. Sounds good. All right, I'm gonna start. And my recipe is super simple. I don't use herbs or rubs or anything like that because I just like having the flavor of the meat. Um, but you can add whatever herbs or um, rubs or paste that you want. And you would do that at this point here. I'm just going to put some salt, maybe about two teaspoons of salt and some freshly ground pepper in a bowl. And I do this because I have to dip my fingers in the salt bowl and it's just easier if I just get it all ready in a little bowl and not have to contaminate my other salt dishes. So I'm just going to rub in the salt and pepper all over. You may not need to use it all, but it's better to have a little bit more than not enough in this case. I was so excited to get this into the sous vide bag that I forgot to do all the other things that I normally do with the prime rib. So I take the meat off the bone and then I tie it back up. This just makes it easier to cut, um, to slice into when we're serving. Then I can just cut this section and not have to worry about the bone. So I was wondering why I had so much salt and pepper left because normally I would season on the inside as well. Ta-da. Ta-da. <laughs> All right. So we're going, now we're gonna tie it back together. You see, with spam, you wouldn't have to worry about such logistics. <laughs> what I find is if, you know how you normally would tie a shoe with just one loop over? I guess that's what you call. If you do it one more time, it actually will stay in place better, tightly, so you don't have to worry about it unraveling as you um, tie up your meat. What I also did, which I didn't talk about, was I used the paper towel and I um, dried up the meat as much as I can. Okay, I'm just going to cut off the, the ends, make it look more tidy. And when you tie up your roast, you get it more round, as opposed to earlier it was more flat. We're just going to put this in the sous vide bag. You want to measure it to make sure that the whole roast is going to fit in there. So this is what I love about the Jewel. It gives me a visual of what my prime rib is going to look like on the inside. So I am going to choose their fave, which is 130 six degrees Fahrenheit and set the time and my roast is four to five inches wide and I'm going to start I'd already started it earlier and I used warm water so that it would get to temperature faster and now we're just waiting for it to come to the exact temperature Okay, I'm just going to add some olive oil. And this is how I would normally do steak as well, so it's pretty simple. 
I'm also going to double bag it because I've had experiences with these particular bags that um, burst in the water and I spent $50 on this roast so I'm not about to let it be ruined just in case the bags um, don't hold its seal. I'm going to submerge this into the water. So you've chosen not to seal it with the sealer? Yep. This will And the cook time is four hours, but you can, you should be able to leave it in here for about six to 10 hours. So we're just gonna let that cook. And remember to always protect your cooking surfaces. I have a pot holder underneath. All right, see you in another like six hours or so. Yeah. I have this lid, so I'm gonna see if I can get that on here without using the clips. Oh, that'll work. And then the lid is uh, specially made for this the jewel. particular and this particular um, container. And we will link those uh, items in the description below. And it's useful to have a lid on if you're going to be sous vide for a long time, so that the water doesn't evaporate. All right. Okay. Now we're really gonna go. Really. See you later. All right. We've been out for most of the day and the roast has been cooking and it's done um, it's been sitting in the warm water for another hour and a half or so and i've read that it's okay to keep it in the water for another two hours after cooking or at least that's what my jewel tells me that i can leave it in the water for another two hours so i did do that and then i turned it off and because uh, my app runs the jewel i can actually turn it off from wherever i am so long as i have data I think that's pretty cool. Sweet. Anyways, I am going to brown the roast in the oven to give it a nice crust. And I'm just going to lay it on a cast iron pan. And I've already preheated my oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. All right. I'm hoping for some, oh, look at that jus at the bottom. So we're good. <laughs> I'm salivating. Can't wait. Meat that comes out of the bag. It doesn't look like much. I know. And that's why you need the crust on it too, because otherwise it just does not look very appetizing. So I just put it bone down and we will just put that in the oven. All right. See you later. Piece of meat. speaking to us. <laughs> Doesn't it look so much better once it's browned? Yes. All right, I'm just going to take this off. Don't lose Let's it. See it on <laughs> a cutting board. And I'm going to heat this pan up. The pan is already hot because I just pulled it out of the oven and I left it in the oven at 450 for 15 minutes to get this crust on there. We like green onions in our juice, so I'm just going to add some of that to brown. And you can use whatever herb you like. Rosemary or thyme would also be very yummy. I have about two tablespoons of flour. I don't know if I need it all. Depends on how much dripping you have. cook the flour for about a minute or two. I'm going to add my dripping and also water. I don't know how much water, maybe about a cup of water. I'm adding about two teaspoons of this better than bouillon, the vegetable one, because I'm out of the beef one. I'm hoping that that will add better color to it and more flavor. You know, one show, one show, and now you think you know it all. Um. <laughs> Just 
going to cut off the string. Don't forget that you have put it on. Don't get to close down because that knife is pointing your direction. Yep, be careful. So this is why you take the bone off. So that you can save this for another day. Wow, girl. I guess it depends on how big a slice you want. But I think thin slices are better. Looks good. All the, the same color all the way through. So wait, is this the first time you've uh, done prime rib sous vide? Yeah. Oh, it's starting to... I know, and here's a little tip for you is that if you have, I'm just using a bread bum. That's what we call it, people. <laughs> you can just soak up the juice from the counter if you're not gonna use it, but also to prevent it from leaking onto your counter. What slice would you like for the taste? Surprise me. All right. Are you guys ready for? The taste. Gonna rock some gravy onto a nice slice of meat. And people, we don't have steak knives, we just use butter knives. Oh, dinner knives. For dinner knives. And uh, they cut right through. Looks pretty yummy. Mmm, that's good. It's tender. The meat is really flavorful. Uh, I don't know if it's like worlds better than what you do in, when you cook it in the oven. Visually, I would say that when you're cutting through, it was uh, more even mm. uh, and no banding like you would with your, your oven technique. It's meat is a very personal thing and if you want to have it more medium rare and you can rock that medium rare and it's going to be medium rare from edge to edge and that's one of the advantages of sous vide. And We're the gonna... gravy? The gravy is okay? Oh yes, the gravy is good. Um, it's not, I was worried that uh, it might be, you know, salty but it, it's got a nice flavor. Get in All there. Mmm, right. mmm, mmm. I hope you enjoyed that. It's just another way of doing a prime rib without messing it up. It's an expensive cut of meat. It's not hard to make. You're always risking um, trying to mess up a cut of meat when there's some really, really easy techniques to get a really good meal on the table. Especially with Easter around the corner, it is uh, the perfect option for those who don't like turkey or ham or lamb. It's true. And my family in general prefers the prime rib to anything else. So I hope you will enjoy that. And if you just want the oven roast or the oven uh, slow roast method, you can find that up here. If you haven't already, come check out my highlight Instagram stories and let me know what you think. And let me know if you want me to do more content like that. You won't find it anywhere else, just on Instagram. So please check it out there. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you don't already to be notified of new videos. Till next time, be simple, ordinary, and joyful.